Let's talk about black and white photography. Now, if you're not familiar with, this is important, if you're not familiar with my book, Advancing Your Photography, the subject I talk about is the fact that there's five stages of photography and visualization, which means seeing in your mind's eye is at the center of that. Then you go to using your equipment. You gotta know your equipment. Those are your tools, your creative tools. A camera is a creative device. It's not just a piece of stuff, you know? It's not just a piece of metal. It is a creative device that gives you the insight and the tools to capture what you have visualized. And then you capture it, which basically means composition and lighting, and then you process it. That's very important when we're talking about black and white photography, developing the image, which is what we do in the dark room and we do in our digital dark room. And the final stage is getting the work, getting your work specifically out to the world. Those are the five stages. Now let's take a look at black and white specifically. You know, I'm gonna go over some misconceptions. And the first misconception is you just jump in and start taking photographs. Hey, how come they don't come out the way I want? I'll tell you why, because that's not where you start. You start where Ansel Adams said, you know, one of the greatest photographers of all time, he said, visualization is the whole key. The whole key, what's a key? You got a door, it's blocking something, it's keeping you out. And if you got the key, you can unlock that door, you can open the door, you can get more creative. So he says the whole key is visualization, which means you see in your mind's eye, you see it here, right? What you intend to photograph and what you intend your photograph to look like. And this applies to capturing in your camera as well as processing, which we'll talk about in a minute too. Don't think the first thing you do is just jump out there and start pressing the shutter. In fact, don't even have the camera to your face. Look around at the environment, take it in. You know, you've heard me talk about this. Where's the light coming from? Where are the shadows? Where's this? Where's that? Where's the framing? Look around without the camera and you'll get inspired and you'll find photographs. And that's really important. You find the photograph, not your camera. Bambi Cantrell said cameras, people take pictures, cameras don't. Okay, this is an example of visualizing a photograph. It's in my book, Create. I talk about this whole story, how I got electrocuted. I fell out of a tree when I was 13. It's not a, it's, I'm not making this up, guys. I brushed against a power line, and right after that, I went out and made this photograph, and I visualized it. It was my first visualization ever that I remember, very clearly visualizing the photograph, and then, bam, I directed it and captured it. It's in the book, Create. You guys ought to get a copy if you don't have it. That's visualization. Another visualization, this is walking along a road in uh, Vermont. This is a friend of mine. I said, hey, wait, you, you keep walking. I'm gonna stand here and then turn around and face me. There's a visualization. And I looked at the incredible leading lines, the framing of the trees and her expression. You know, that was all visualized. Many examples of visualization. I bet in your own work, you can remember a time you visualized a photograph before you press the shutter. This is another one of my wife at the Dorsey Museum. In this case, she visualized it and she basically art directed it, which means that was her vision. And she stood off to the side. As you can see, she's not straight in the center. That would have made it a very different photograph. That was a visualization on her part. You can get insight from other people on your visualization. It doesn't, it doesn't all have to come out of your own mind. So common misconception number two, you know, uh, don't photograph the commonplace Look for unusual subjects only. And by the way, what should I photograph then if I don't photograph what's around me all the time? I have to somehow be magically transported and I can only photograph when I go on vacation because it's all new and different. No, not true. And 
the person who really helps us understand that is Edward Weston. Now, both Edward Weston and Ansel Adams lived about two miles from here, from where I am right now in Carmel, California. They lived close to each other and they were friends. And Edward Weston said, anything that excites me for any reason, I will photograph. Anything that excites me for any reason, I will photograph. Not searching for unusual subject matter, but making the commonplace unusual. Making the commonplace unusual. Now, if you are familiar with his photography, you'll know some of the key photographs that we remember him by. Uh, one is called Pepper Number 30. We have a video of that. Jared can stick it up there. You guys can watch it later. You should be familiar with Edward Weston. He's one of the greatest photographers of the last century. But this is so important, you guys. Photographing the commonplace will open your doors, especially when we're talking about black and white photography. This is one of the first examples of me photographing the commonplace. This was school kids. This was me in the seventh grade taking a photograph of what some kids had done in our classroom. Now I went to a, a kind of a free form, pre hippie beatnik school, um, you know, where we did stuff like this and creativity was valued more than learning grammar. Um, I had to later in my life learn grammar and I didn't learn it in grade school, grammar school, they call it. But, uh, you know, I had a pretty, pretty good eye and I turned the camera on an angle here and that's, but I was taking the, a photograph of what was in, in at that time commonplace. It was my classroom. 12 years old. That's probably my first, and that is the first photograph that I've taken that I have sold consistently throughout the years. It's been in my books. It's been in different places. So, you know, if we judge a, a photographer going professional by when you sell your work, well, I guess I became a pro at age 12. Another example of backpacking, I've done a ton of backpacking. I used to teach mountaineering. And, you know, I came across a cabin. This is in uh, Canyonlands, Utah. Uh, wow, isn't it 18 or 19 maybe? And I saw these um, horseshoes hanging. I thought that's, you know, really interesting. It's commonplace. It's like part of the scene. Another black and white photograph. Um, I'm not quite sure what camera I used. I might have used a Leica for that. I, I'm not quite remembering what it was. Another commonplace photograph, a dog print, a paw print in the sand. You know, it's interesting. It's just framed by these lions, which are actually made up that darker uh, set of, you know, where the where the sand is is dark because there's some oil spill in the sand, which is unfortunate, but it makes a really interesting set of lines, almost like flames and boom, right in the middle of it is that paw print. Another commonplace thing. Look for those commonplace things. This was taken at the same time. This was taken, I believe, with a Nikon F. Um, black and white film, obviously. There's that starfish washed up amongst all the the rocks, another commonplace thing that just jumped out at me. And that's really where my inspiration came from as a photographer, was from both Ansel Adams and Edward Weston, uh, and also Henry Cartier-Bresson. Obviously, he didn't take these kinds of photographs so much as people. But Edward Weston definitely inspired me to just look for the unusual in the commonplace. Okay. Another huge misconception, my camera sees exactly like I do. Oh, if I just look in the back of my camera, I'll know exactly what I'm photographing. No, 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 no. Or if I just look out and see, that's what my camera is going to capture. Absolutely, you will be disappointed with that. The camera does not see what your eye sees. Look at the difference just in framing alone. You know, you've, you've got a rectangle here that you're framing in, or maybe a square, your, your eyes see this huge, broad expanse. So first of all, you got to narrow your vision down to the frame that you're looking for through. 
but also your lens, your uh, sensor, your film, all those things are gonna look very different than what your eyes see. So you have to, you have to become familiar with what your camera sees. And especially with black and white, you really wanna learn to see in black and white. Learn to see what the camera sees, especially in black and white, because look, there's no color. And it's not just an absence of color. You have to know how is that sensor or your camera or your film going to treat certain colors so you can visualize that. I learned to visualize in black and white. I could look at a scene and actually convert it in my mind to what it was going to, and I can still do that. I'm looking out at this monitor, which has got all kinds of color on it. And I know what it's going to look like in black and white. And that just comes from experience. And you can do this drill. You visualize the photograph, you capture it, and then compare it on your screen. And just do that back and forth. You know, what does it look like out there when I photograph it? What does it look like on the screen as a black and white? And you can just go back and forth, train your eye. It's just a training process, you guys. That's really what it's all about. You tune in to what does it look like as a black and white. And, you know, your, your mind will catch on after a while. You'll get it. You'll go. It's like muscle memory. You start to develop that sense. And it really helps you with your photographs because now you're seeing what the camera sees. Bob Holmes said there's no shortcut for that. And it's true. And you really do have to take the time use your equipment, see what it looks like, which is another reason you shouldn't be jumping around from camera to camera to camera to camera to lens to lens, to do, to do, because you're not gonna be able to keep up with all those changes and it's gonna add variables to your photographs you don't want. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.